Thanks for being here. Subscribe to Cheating Stories Best, so you don't miss new stories. Did the wife self-confess to cheating on her husband? Today we have a story with a similar plot. Enjoy watching it. Just a week ago, I, a 36-year-old woman, transgressed against my 39-year-old husband by engaging with the floor manager, a 50-year-old man. It's difficult for me to admit, but I realize I am responsible for my actions. Let me describe what happened. My husband and I had planned to attend a work party together, but our nanny canceled at the last minute, leaving my husband to look after our child at home. I decided to attend the party alone and ended up spending the night in a hotel with my manager. Looking back, I understand that my behavior was a precursor to wrongdoing. There was a strange tension between my manager and me ever since he was transferred to our floor a few months ago. My husband, working on the floor below, noticed this tension. I reassured him, saying it was nothing serious, although I felt it myself. I deceived myself, trying to ignore the growing anxiety. That evening, my manager started complimenting my appearance and attire, which led us to a hotel several blocks from the party venue. My husband's intuition was correct, and I stayed there until morning. When I returned home, my husband was waiting for me. He asked why I was in a different hotel when the party was planned at the Y Hotel. Unfortunately, I forgot that we share locations through an app. I could no longer hide the truth. I had been unfaithful to him and had planned it for several weeks, understanding the consequences for our family. It was a conscious choice, not a spontaneous mistake, and now I must take responsibility. Our marriage was far from perfect, but I had no right to such betrayal. Since giving birth a year ago, I'd struggled with low self-esteem and body image issues. Losing the baby weight has been difficult, making me feel less attractive. My husband, in typical male fashion, hasn't paid much attention to this. Lately, I've been going to the gym and managed to lose a few kilograms, but he seems not to notice. Our intimacy has become less fulfilling, especially considering our exhaustion from caring for our energetic child. I understand that none of these circumstances justify my actions, but they provide context. That evening, I allowed myself to indulge in what I had been missing feeling desired and attractive. The realization of the suffering I've caused him and our family fills me with horror. We've had our difficulties, but I sincerely love him. Although I can't undo what I've done, I'm willing to do everything possible to rectify my mistake. He's willing to give me a second chance. He's experienced his parents' divorce and is determined not to let our child become a victim of my actions. He asked me to sever all ties with my supervisor, even if it meant giving up a potential career opportunity. I was torn because the job could have advanced my career, but deep down, I knew he was right. It wasn't just about the job. It was about the promises we made. I needed some time to think it over and eventually decided to prioritize my family over the job. I believe it was the right choice. As much as I want to mend our relationship, I recognize the depth of my husband's pain. I've hurt him profoundly, and my actions have left emotional scars. I'm determined to make things right but navigating the aftermath is challenging. I can feel his anguish, and it's heart-wrenching to realize the extent of the damage to our relationship. I'm thankful that he's willing to give us a chance through counseling. I'm committed to being the kind of wife he deserves, but I understand that healing will take time and effort. I'm completely aware of the feelings of inadequacy he's dealing with, and I understand his right to feel that way. It's a difficult situation for him, and I deeply regret putting him in this position. I'm here to make amends, but I'm also being realistic. The path to redemption is lengthy, and there's no assurance that things will return to the way they were. Ultimately, it's about what's best for our family, and I'm ready to do whatever it takes to rebuild trust and respect. I'm sharing not to seek sympathy but to acknowledge my mistakes and the journey I'm on to make things right. It's a challenging process, but I'm learning every day. To be honest, the situation has taken an unexpected turn, and I need to share this with you. After my husband and I had that heart-wrenching conversation about my infidelity, I believed we were making progress. We were communicating, attending counseling, and I was genuinely making an effort to demonstrate my remorse. However, things became even more complex. It turns out that my husband went through my call records and discovered that I had been talking to my supervisor for over an hour when I claimed to be at my mother's place. In truth, I was at a mall because I needed privacy for my call. 
I realize it may sound wrong, but my supervisor was concerned about my professional move to a different floor, and I didn't want my husband to find out about these calls after he explicitly told me not to. So, I went to the mall to take the call. This led to me being caught in another lie. I'm still in disbelief that he went through my phone like that. It feels like he doesn't trust me anymore or something. When he confronted me about it, I was taken aback and stumbled through some excuses. However, he wasn't willing to accept it. He packed up our child and left the house. He's currently staying elsewhere, and I'm left here dealing with the mess I've created. Honestly, I've been feeling unheard and neglected ever since he discovered my one-night stand. For the past month, I've been giving him space and tending to his every need, but often he remains distant and emotionally cold. I understand what he's going through, but at times I also need someone to talk to, and my supervisor was there. It's frustrating because I feel like he hasn't even given me a chance. I'm genuinely trying to make amends, and I've been reflecting on my low self-esteem and the issues I've been facing. Doesn't that count for something? I've learned that my husband is staying with his parents, and honestly, I believe he should handle this situation more maturely without resorting to his parents' support as if he were a child. Taking our child with him is unjustifiable. It feels like he's using them against me. I've tried reaching out to him to initiate a conversation, but he's not responding. It's as if he's shutting me out, and I understand I deserve this treatment, but it still hurts. I acknowledge my mistakes, but I just wish we could go back to resolving our problems through communication instead of being in this state. I feel awful about the entire situation. I'm aware that I've deeply hurt him, and the fact that I continue to be dishonest only adds to the pain. Seeing him so upset is challenging, and I wish I had been more transparent from the start. I comprehend why he's so hurt and angry, trust is delicate, and I further eroded it. I can't help but ponder my actions and recognize that my attempts to rebuild trust were overshadowed by my lack of honesty. I've come to realize that it's not just about expressing regret but also about being honest about my actions. I've created a chaotic situation, and I'm ready to face the consequences. Currently, I'm giving my husband the space he requires. It's evident that my behavior has inflicted a great deal of pain, and I want to honor his emotions and boundaries. I hope that with time, we can reach a point of mutual understanding and perhaps find a way to work through this. However, I also understand that it's not entirely within my control. I want to express my gratitude for the support and advice you've provided thus far. It has been enlightening to hear various perspectives, and I am committed to learning from my mistakes and evolving as an individual. I will continue to keep you all informed of the progress. The past few weeks have been extremely tough, and I believe it's crucial to share my struggles with strangers online. Since my husband left with our child, things have taken a more serious turn. Today, he officially served me with divorce papers. The reality of our marriage coming to an end is hitting me hard, and accepting it has been a challenging process. During this period, I haven't had the chance to see our child, which has been one of the most painful aspects of this situation. It's a daily battle knowing I can't be there for him, and I completely understand why my husband is taking this step to protect our child. I hope that with time, I can find a way to rebuild trust and demonstrate that I can be a dependable parent. Furthermore, my family has disowned me. The isolation and loneliness I'm experiencing are overwhelming, and it's a harsh realization of how one mistake can reveal the true colors of those closest to you. As for my supervisor, he's persisted with his advances, but I'm doing my best to maintain a distance. I'm aware of the potential rumors and gossip that could circulate at work, and I want to avoid any further complications. It's crucial for me to uphold my professionalism, especially given the current circumstances. However, I sense that the rumor mill is already in motion. My supervisor has caused tremendous harm to my life as well as my husband's and child's. I feel like a monster. The path ahead is uncertain, but I'm dedicated to learning from my mistakes and striving for a brighter future. I'd like to express my gratitude to those who have offered their support and insights throughout this journey. Story 2 My wife and I are both 38 years old. We tied the knot 18 years ago and have been blessed with two wonderful children, a 17-year-old boy and a 16-year-old girl. Our journey began when we met at the age of 19 through mutual friends, and it was love at first sight. Despite our youth and limited finances, our love for each other helped us navigate life's occasional challenges. 
At that time, I was employed in customer service for an ISP, while my wife worked as an assistant coordinator in an office. We managed to secure a nice apartment and own two decent cars. A few months after our wedding, my wife became pregnant with our son. Coincidentally, I received a promotion to a supervisory role in my department, which came with a significant salary increase. Consequently, we made the decision for my wife to transition into the role of a stay-at-home mom once our son arrived. One year after our son's birth, our daughter entered the world. Three years down the line, we purchased a lovely four-bedroom starter home in a family-friendly neighborhood. Despite the demands of parenthood, we always made an effort to keep the flame alive in our love life. I couldn't have been prouder of my family and my career achievements, and it felt like we were living the American dream. Life was truly good. However, everything took a dramatic turn. My world came crashing down when I received a voicemail message at the office one day from a woman whom I'll refer to as Mrs. Jones, a pseudonym. In her message, she explained that she was the spouse of a former co-worker of my wife and that she had something crucial to discuss with me regarding them. Since I wasn't acquainted with this co-worker, I had no inkling about the nature of her call. I promptly returned her call and she began to divulge news that I knew I wouldn't like. Then she revealed that my wife was involved in an affair with her husband. Mrs. Jones explained that she had just uncovered the affair earlier that week and her husband had confessed. According to her husband, they had engaged in inappropriate conversations and meetings for over a year, but it had only turned physical in the past week. She stumbled upon this by finding an explicit email exchange between her husband and my wife, discussing rendezvous at their house while she was at work. Naturally, I was deeply disturbed by this revelation and initially found it hard to believe. Upon returning home, I was met with my wife in tears, pleading for forgiveness. She was already in full crisis mode, clearly informed by her lover that their secret affair had been exposed, and his wife had spoken to me before my arrival. My wife had taken her children to my parents' house, claiming she was planning an impromptu date night to surprise me. We both cried uncontrollably for what felt like hours. I had never felt such anguish in my life, both physically and mentally and my wife was equally distraught. We stayed up all night engaged in tearful conversations. I did a lot of shouting, questioning why she would do this to me and our children. Throughout this emotional turmoil, my wife continuously implored me not to leave her, professing her deep love and profound regret. She confirmed the details of the affairs provided by her paramour and vowed that if I granted her another chance, she would demonstrate herself as the best wife in the world and ensure that I never regretted staying with her. I repeatedly informed her that I could never trust or be intimate with her again and that I desired a divorce. Each time I uttered this, she became hysterical. In the end, I conveyed that I would consider remaining in the marriage only if she agreed to sign a postnuptial agreement. I had read a story some time ago about a man who had implemented such an agreement with his unfaithful wife. I couldn't help but remember that story and the sympathy I had felt for the man and his children, and now I found myself in his shoes. The agreement would detail the affair and stipulate that in the event of a future divorce by either of us following this affair, she would not be eligible for alimony and would only be entitled to 25% of jointly held assets, as opposed to the standard 50%. Additionally, we would both maintain 50-50 custody of our children, with the primary residence of the children being with me. I presented her with the choice, accept the postnuptial agreement or proceed with an immediate divorce in which case she would receive alimony, 50% of the assets, and likely gain primary custody of the kids. She chose to proceed with the postnuptial agreement but requested that we exclude the affair from the document due to her shame. I firmly declined this request, emphasizing that without acknowledging the affair, there would be no foundation for the agreement. However, we did agree to keep the affair confidential between ourselves, a significant mistake, as I'll explain later, and attempted to move forward from it. Nevertheless, I expressed my doubt that we would ever be more than roommates co-parenting our children. She consented to keeping the secret, cried profusely, and vowed to spend her life, if necessary, to regain my trust and unconditional love. In the subsequent week, I consulted a divorce attorney, and within two weeks, we had an assigned and filed postnuptial agreement in place. Subsequently, I insisted that both of us undergo STD testing and arranged for DNA tests for our children, given my complete lack of trust in her at that point. 
while the STD panels caused her additional shame and embarrassment, she was deeply saddened and depressed by my request for DNA testing. She swore that the children were mine but eventually agreed to the tests, understanding that my trust in her had plummeted. Over the next two years, we endured a wretched existence, living a facade that was toxic to our emotional well-being and sanity. We maintained the pretense with our children, extended family, and friends. My wife kept all our clothing in her master bedroom, and each night we retired to our bedroom to create the illusion that we were sharing a bed as usual. However, I would then have her discreetly move to the spare bedroom for the night, as I wanted no physical contact with her. For a full two years, we never slept in the same bed. In front of our children, family, and friends, we would display affection, holding hands and sharing light kisses on the lips. However, when we were alone, I completely ignored her and treated her with cold indifference. Over time, I grew to despise my wife, her presence repelled me. But despite this, she remained relentless in her efforts to win back my love. I, on the other hand, remained emotionally distant and unresponsive. I insisted that she find a part-time job that allowed her to work while our children were at school. Our daily routine involved all of us leaving the house at approximately the same time. After her workday, she would pick up the kids, return home, and prepare dinner. I would arrive home around 6 p.m., and we would have dinner together, clean up, and spend the remainder of the evening engaging with the kids, which included conversations, games, movie nights, and assisting with homework. During the weekends, I took the kids on various outings, such as trips to the science center, museums, amusement parks, the zoo, swimming, hikes, and more, leaving my wife at home. We often departed in the morning and didn't return until late afternoon. She desperately desired to join us, but I preferred her not to. So both of us lied to everyone, claiming that this time alone was her mommy break to provide her respite from her weekly responsibilities of cooking and house chores. Reflecting back, this two-year period was the most challenging time in my life. Our circumstances took a turn one Saturday when our children spent the day with my wife's parents. I found myself in a predicament in the garage while trying to install shelving and bike racks on the wall. Despite my reluctance, I went inside the house and asked my wife for assistance. She was thrilled to help, as this was the first time in over two years that I had requested her company for such a task. She had recently taken a bath, exuding the clean scent of shampoo and soap. I could tell she had shaved her legs, and she was dressed in very short shorts and a midriff-bearing t-shirt. It was evident that she had intentionally dressed this way for me, as she consistently dressed provocatively whenever we were alone. Although those instances were infrequent, primarily due to my choices, on previous occasions, I had pretended not to notice her attire. To install the unit, I had to slide beneath the bottom shelf, which was approximately 3.5 feet above the ground, while she stood beside me, securing the shelf against the wall. All I could see was her legs extending just beyond her belly button, and it undeniably aroused me. I had to guide her to move closer and closer to me to position the shelf correctly, and this led to both of us bursting into laughter, especially when she ended up almost right on top of me. I must confess, those last few inches were quite unnecessary. After successfully mounting the shelf, I emerged from under the bottom shelf, and we were still in stitches from laughter. She remarked, that was fun, and without saying a word, I slowly placed my drill on the shelf, then seized her and shared a kiss. She smiled, and I took her hand, leading her up to our bedroom, where we spent the entire afternoon and evening making love, conversing, cuddling, and showering together. It marked the most incredible session we'd ever had and one of the most unforgettable days of my life. This day marked the beginning of our second marriage, and it has been 11 years filled with love, happiness, and bliss since that moment. I couldn't have asked for a better wife and mother. Immediately following the affair, I used to obsessively think about it every waking minute, but now I can go months without it crossing my mind. We haven't discussed the affair in years, and I stopped bringing it up to her since that magical Saturday, as I felt we had left that dark time behind us. We had the perfect married life until the return of Mrs. Jones. Once again, my world was turned upside down earlier today. It's Saturday morning on September 3rd, 2022 and I was shopping at a large home improvement store. A woman approached me and mentioned my name. I confirmed it, and she proceeded to introduce herself with her first and last name. 
Her face and name didn't ring a bell, but her voice sounded vaguely familiar, though I couldn't quite place it. Then she added, you might remember me by my former last name, Jones, and instantly I recognized her, even though we had never met in person and had only spoken on the phone that one time. I was taken aback as I had always assumed she and her husband were around our age, however, she appeared to be much older, possibly in her late fifties. Mrs. Jones mentioned that she recognized me from some of my online photos and inquired about how things had turned out for me. I shared that my wife and I had reconciled and had been happily married ever since. Her facial expression showed surprise, feeling awkward, the only response I could muster was, I'm so sorry for my wife's actions. She replied, don't apologize. We were married to two demons. Then she proceeded to reveal details that would forever alter my life. She remarked, you're obviously a much bigger person than me, and continued. Once I found out he had been having an affair with her every Wednesday morning for 16 months, in our own bed, there was no way I was staying with him. She went on to share that the man cheated on her on Valentine's Day, my birthday, Christmas Eve, and our anniversary, then came home to be with her. I was, of course, stunned by this information but chose to listen. She added, karma is a real force, though as his life has been nothing but turmoil since our divorce. Mrs. Jones revealed that her ex-husband was terminated from his job for conducting the affair during work hours, which she had reported. Following his firing, it was discovered that he, a vice president of sales, had been engaging in commission fraud for over five years, submitting false sales data. The company pressed criminal and civil charges against him and sued for restitution totaling over $240,000. Criminal charges were dropped after he promptly paid the requested restitution. The settlement and legal fees depleted a substantial portion of his divorce settlement. She explained that he had relocated to the Orlando, Florida, area in an attempt to make a fresh start but ended up declaring bankruptcy. Mrs. Jones revealed that he had suffered a severe heart attack the previous year, resulting in significant damage to his heart. Consequently, he now had limited mobility dealt with leg swelling, relied on a cane to walk, and was compelled to retire at the age of 66. He had recently turned 68, which was a 30-year age gap compared to my wife. She commented, now he's an isolated, financially struggling elderly man with two children who despise him. She emphasized that she had never harbored ill will toward him and had always encouraged their children to maintain a healthy relationship with their father. Unfortunately, they couldn't stand him. Lastly, she mentioned that she had remarried eight years ago and was currently happier than ever before in her life. We exchanged phone numbers, and she offered to provide me with details about the affair or copies of the emails if I ever wanted them. I expressed my gratitude, wished her well, and we parted ways. By that point, I felt emotionally numb, realizing that my wife had blatantly deceived me. Our entire second marriage had been constructed on a lie. It wasn't a brief affair, instead, she had led a completely separate life with this individual for 16 months. Engaging in intimate relations on days where her parents were looking after our children, so she could claim to be busy with household chores and shopping. Rather than feeling sad, I was overwhelmed with disgust, rage, and anger, emotions I had never experienced to such an extent before. This heightened anger deeply concerned me, and I knew I couldn't return home at that moment, uncertain if I could control myself. Instead, I texted my wife, explaining that I would be doing additional shopping and grabbing something from a fast food drive through indicating that I wouldn't be home for lunch. I spent the following four hours devising a plan on how to address my wife, outlining the steps I would take, and shared my story here, together with feedback. During this time, my wife reached out to me through phone calls and text messages, simply checking in. I informed her that I was just doing a little shopping and that I'd surprise her when I got home. She seemed somewhat suspicious and concerned, likely because I typically don't shop much, but she replied, Okay. I love you. See you when you get here. Here's the action plan I devised. 1. Dot confront my wife this evening, which is Saturday. 2. I moved her belongings into the spare bedroom tonight, informed our children tomorrow, and shared the news with our parents on Labor Day. I will meet with an attorney on Tuesday to draft an in-house separation agreement. At the end of the 90-day period, I will make a decision among three options, one reconciliation, two divorce, or three extending the evaluation period by another 90 days. 
On the career front, I received a promotion to Vice President of Customer Service after working for five years at the Internet Service Provider. I transitioned to a customer care manager position at a large privately held industrial company. Over the past 13 years, I've steadily climbed the corporate ladder to reach the top position in the department. My family and my employees are thrilled for me, and I'm proud that my years of hard work have been acknowledged and rewarded. This new role involves both in-state and out-of-state travel, which will serve as a welcome distraction as I navigate the personal challenges that lie ahead in the coming year or so. Now moving on to the matter at hand, I confronted my wife, and she admitted to everything. She explained that she hadn't disclosed the full story 13 years ago because she believed I would divorce her if I knew the truth. The affair persisted for 16 months. They reconnected while waiting in line at a national coffee house, which she frequented daily. Subsequently, they began meeting there every Wednesday to discuss their workplace. On their third meeting, he invited her to his house to see his new exercise spin bike. She acknowledged that she knew it was wrong and had an idea of what might transpire, but she couldn't resist. She disclosed that their first encounter took place on a sofa in his basement, but afterward, they continued their liaisons in his marital bed. She then admitted that they engaged in everything and did not use protection. Regrettably, I asked for this detail, and my emotional state was shattered beyond repair. At this point, she acknowledged that despite her infidelity, she ensured I was really satisfied throughout the affair. She emphasized how she initiated these encounters and fulfilled all my desires. I responded by expressing how this made the situation even more repugnant and distressing. I went on to suggest that she might have or still has an underlying mental illness, as a mentally sound person wouldn't engage in such cruelty towards their spouse and family. She concurred and wept, confessing that she desperately wanted to end the affair but couldn't bring herself to do it until it was discovered, which she claimed brought her back to her senses. She asserted that she had only ever loved me and had absolutely no emotional attachment to him. I countered by stating that such a claim was completely unbelievable because it's impossible to engage in a 16-month-long affair without developing strong feelings for the other person. She maintained her denial, crying throughout our conversation, pleading for my forgiveness and asking me to focus on the wonderful life we've built over the past 11 years. She added, I always made sure I was a great wife and mom, even when I was having the affair. I questioned the seriousness of her statement, leaving her puzzled. I drew a comparison, stating, that's like a professional thief telling a judge, I've been an upstanding and law-abiding citizen over the past 16 months, except for the banks I robbed every Wednesday morning. I firmly asserted that she was far from being a good wife and mother during that period, in fact, she was quite the opposite. She sobbed in agreement and expressed a desire for psychiatric help and therapy. She then asked if I would support her on this journey, to which I replied that we would discuss it. When I inquired about why she chose to be with him, she cried and pleaded, please stop saying that to me. I feel so terrible and I've suffered mentally because of this for 13 years. I pressed her to tell me why, and she explained, I was young, impressionable, and isolated as a stay-at-home mom. And he was this mature man who was the most respected and successful figure in the company. I couldn't believe he was showing interest in me. I know it was incredibly foolish and morally wrong, but you wanted the truth. Hearing this was like a gut punch, but I thanked her for her honesty. I then confronted her, saying, you realize you played a role in breaking up a home? She looked at me with a sorrowful, puzzled expression. I went on to inform her that the Joneses divorced shortly after their affair, and their children no longer have a relationship with him. She cried and admitted, that's terrible. I feel so guilty for what I did. I asked, you didn't know any of this? She replied, no, I completely blocked him from my mind after you confronted me. I continued, you probably aren't aware of your former lover's current condition, are you? She responded, stop calling him that. You are my lover, and you have been for 19 years, and always will be. I informed her that Mr. Jones suffered a severe heart attack and is in declining health, residing in Florida. She questioned, why are you telling me this? Even though I don't wish harm on anyone, I replied, I thought you might want to know about someone you were involved with. She adamantly stated, stop it, stop it. I never loved him. I've moved forward and want to leave those difficult days behind. 
I then made a hurtful comment, saying, Well, if things don't work out for us, I'm sure he'd appreciate having his young companion back to assist him with that. She burst into tears, rushed to our bedroom, threw herself on the bed, and cried for an hour. I felt a pang of guilt and considered apologizing but refrained, recognizing that my comment was minor compared to what she and her former lover did to me and Mrs. Jones. I allowed her to let out her emotions and then went upstairs to say, All right, it's time to move your belongings to the spare bedroom. She pleaded and begged, but I remained firm, and she reluctantly assisted me in relocating all of her possessions to the spare bedroom. I won't deny it was emotionally challenging, she was in tears, and I shed quite a few myself discreetly during bathroom breaks, as I didn't want to display my emotions in front of her. The conversation with our children went as well as one could hope for. Initially, my wife couldn't face them and wanted me to break the news, but then she joined us and took it upon herself to explain everything while keeping her composure. They were upset and disgusted with her, and they became very attached and concerned about me during the first couple of weeks after our talk. However, as we spent more time together discussing everything, they are gradually beginning to come to terms with the situation. They both expressed that they still love their mom deeply, but their perception of her has been forever altered, at least for now. Talking to our parents turned out to be even more challenging than I had expected. All four of them were visibly upset. Our mothers were crying heavily, which, in turn, brought tears to our father's eyes, and I found myself breaking down as well. During both meetings, we had to pause multiple times to regain our composure. What deeply affected them was the fact that they had been looking after our children while my wife was involved with someone else. Strangely, both sets of parents carried a sense of guilt about this. They remain upset with my wife, with the exception of my mother, who has softened her stance a bit. However, our fathers are utterly disgusted with her and refuse to speak to her. Despite these events happening 13 years ago, our legal separation agreement is now signed and in effect. We both decided to continue living in our house. My wife pleaded with me not to go through with it, but I explained that it was necessary. Things have been relatively calm at home, we communicate daily, and our interactions with our kids are gradually returning to normal. Although there is no intimacy between us, I have absolutely no desire for her, while she's desperate for my affection. But I remain emotionally detached, as outlined in my plan. I am committed to giving this 90-day period to make a decision either 1. Proceed with a divorce, 2. Attempt reconciliation, or 3. Extend the separation for more time. This may be my final update, but I might return to share what decision we make. It seems that the feedback is divided evenly between divorce and reconciliation. I want to express my gratitude to everyone here for listening and responding to my story. You may not realize how much your feedback has helped me navigate through this. That was our first story in this video. Our next story will be about about a girl who had an amazing life story. Let's hear it. I'm reaching out here to ease my heart, find support, and possibly gain some valuable advice. My husband and I are both over 40, and we've been married for over 24 years. We have three children, two girls and one boy. To maintain privacy, I won't delve into details about our family, just describe the situation. During the first 16 years of our marriage, everything was wonderful. However, something unexpected happened during this time, my husband learned about a brief. Bill considered affair I had with my ex-boyfriend from his ex-wife. I'll try to explain the situation in more detail. About seven years after our wedding, we attended a high school reunion. I was part of the organizing committee and returned home six days before the event. My daughters accompanied me, and my husband joined us a day before the main event. We all participated in the reunion together, then stayed with my parents. However, during the period when I was without my husband, I met up with my first serious boyfriend, whom I'll refer to as Reed. For several days, we engaged in inappropriate contact. At that time, Reed was married and had his own children. He claimed his marriage was falling apart, and he was unhappy. In contrast, my marriage was happy and strong. I realized I did it to recapture some of my youth. The years spent caring for my family made me yearn for excitement and risk. I despised myself for it. During those three days, we behaved as if we were back in school. But this time, we had our actions not only from our spouses but also from our parents. 
we parted ways two days before the reunion, realizing the huge mistake we made. We promised not to communicate further and to act as if nothing happened. The reunion went well, and I even introduced my husband to my ex-boyfriend and his wife. We chatted a bit, and when the two men stood together, I couldn't believe I betrayed my husband, who had always been there for me. I felt incredibly guilty. I promised myself never to tell him to avoid causing him pain. The next nine years of our marriage were almost perfect. I tried to make him happy, dedicating myself to him entirely. I took care of the house and children so he could relax after work. My sense of guilt remained deep, but I was glad to be a devoted wife and caring mother. During this time, we had a son, and my husband was immensely happy. Everything was going well for us until one day my husband arrived home from work early and said we needed to talk. I was concerned and thought something had gone wrong at his job. Instead, he told me he had spoken to my old boyfriend's ex-wife earlier that day. As soon as he mentioned their names, my heart started racing. I had difficulty breathing, and I felt lightheaded. He proceeded to explain that she had told him her husband confessed to an affair he and I had years ago. She mentioned that her husband had been diagnosed with an aggressive form of Parkinson's disease six years ago and was now in an advanced stage. They had been divorced for seven years, which I also didn't know. But she and her children still helped him with some tasks as his condition had worsened. Apparently, he was consumed by guilt, and he finally confessed. She's remarried now, but she continued to assist her kids with his groceries and some basic errands, as he didn't have anyone else. To her, the affair was no longer significant, but she felt a moral obligation to inform my husband, believing he should be aware. I agree with her, but I wish she had contacted me first so I could have confessed instead of catching my husband and me off guard. I begged my husband for forgiveness, explaining that it was a long time ago and had no real impact on our relationship. I reminded him of our wonderful marriage and assured him that he and our children remain my top priority. Naturally, he was upset, hurt, and felt deeply disrespected. He became extremely angry, which was something I had never witnessed before. For the next hour, he used offensive language, including disrespectful terms, to address me. I sat there crying, not uttering a word, as I believed every word he was saying. He had been nothing but a wonderful man to me and my entire family. Once he finished his outburst, he left in his truck without specifying his destination. An hour later, he called and told me he'd return in the evening. He instructed me to gather all the kids for a family meeting and to think about what I would tell them. I inquired about what he meant and pleaded with him not to make me do this, as we didn't want to burden our children. I expressed that I should be the only one suffering for this, but he insisted that they needed to know the truth about their mother. He told me not to say a word to them until he got home in the evening. I prepared dinner for the kids, but I couldn't eat much due to my nervousness. They asked where their dad was, and I informed them he'd return later as he was working. I then mentioned that he wanted to have a family meeting that night to discuss something. They inquired about why and at what time, and I told them to be ready at 8.30. I texted my husband to inform him that we were all set for 8.30 and also asked him to call me so we could go over what we were going to say. However, he didn't call, instead, he arrived promptly at 8.30 and entered the kitchen where we were all seated. His demeanor was notably different, he was no longer angry. Instead, he was cheerful, giving each of our kids a kiss and a hug as usual. He sat down, looked at me, and asked if I wanted to start. I attempted to speak but couldn't. Tearfully, I said I couldn't do it. He then proceeded to explain to the kids in simple terms what I had done. My daughters began to cry and express anger, while my eight-year-old son looked bewildered and frightened. My daughters asked when this had all happened, and I told them it occurred years ago, and I couldn't recall the exact year. My son, with a fearful expression and tears in his eyes, asked his dad if he was going to leave us. Hearing this, I began to sob, uncertain about what my husband would say. Thankfully, he assured our son that he wasn't leaving but mentioned that he would be sleeping in the spare twin bed in his room for a while. He asked our son if that was okay, and our son eagerly replied, Sure, Dad. My husband explained to the kids that things were going to be challenging for a while and he wanted them to understand that things between us might not be quite the same for some time, if ever. He assured them that things in their world would remain unchanged and advised them to bring up any discomfort to us so we could address it promptly. 
Our marriage was never the same after that day, and it took nearly 13 months before we began to regain some sense of being husband and wife. It wasn't full intimacy, but he gradually allowed some forms of physical contact. This continued for the next three months, but only when he was in the mood. He wouldn't initiate anything with me, but I would push things as far as he'd permit daily. Eventually, we did start sharing love again, but he couldn't do it while looking at me, and the tenderness wasn't the same as before. He explained that when he saw my face, he imagined my old boyfriend, which immediately killed his excitement. I didn't quite understand this, but my therapist mentioned that it's not uncommon. She said that for some men, this is a way to regain their masculinity that was compromised by the affair. While it might seem selfish and one-sided on his part, for me, it's a turn-on for some unknown reason, and I eagerly anticipate these moments. Nonetheless, I wish we could return to the way things used to be. My husband was so giving before and always made sure I was satisfied. Now he doesn't seem to care about my feelings, and I think he just uses me as a way to release his desires. He's told me that he won't do things for me like I do for him, if you catch my drift. To him, I somehow feel permanently tainted in that aspect. It's bizarre, I know, but that's how things have been for the last three years. I've grown accustomed to it and accepted it as our new normal. All things considered, everything was going pretty well between us until this past January. It was during this time that something that should have been an enjoyable exercise turned into something that set us back months in our healing process. The wounds from the past affair were reopened, and we found ourselves even further behind than we had been. It was then that my son came home and told his dad and me during dinner about a project his 8th grade history class was working on. The project involved mapping our family history in America as far back as possible. The teacher suggested that students could use reports from genetic testing companies, but it wasn't mandatory. He said his friends were planning to use them, and he wanted to do the same. My husband suggested that we should do it, mentioning it's something he's been interested in for a while. I smiled and agreed with them, and we finished dinner, spending the rest of the night watching a movie. My attention wasn't really on the movie, though, as my mind was occupied by something else, something I knew could potentially jeopardize everything we had worked hard to rebuild up to that point. While I was quite certain that my husband was my son's biological father, there was a slim chance he might not be, given the timing of his conception during the alumni week when I had been with both men. I know what you're probably thinking, and I understand your perspective, but I want to be honest. After the movie, my son went to his room, and my husband and I began getting ready for bed. It was at that moment I asked my husband to sit down with me because I had something important to tell him. I then explained precisely when the affair took place and mentioned the slight possibility that our son might not be his biological child. He buried his face in his hands and then shot an angry glare at me. I wasn't sure what he would do next. He got up, packed a bag, took his shaving kit, and left. I asked him to stay and discuss it, but he just left. I didn't want to alarm my son about what was happening, so I let my husband leave without resistance. I called and sent him texts, but he didn't respond until the next morning when he called to say he was coming home to talk. I felt a sense of relief and believed we could work through this, given all that we had been through and the progress we had made. When he walked through the door, I grabbed him and asked him to look into my eyes. He hesitated but I held him tightly, locking my arms around both his arms and his midsection. Eventually, he looked at me, somewhat frustrated, and I told him, you are the only man I've ever loved. I said I was willing to do anything for him, and he knew that. Then I explained that I was 99% sure he was our son's biological father, and that I had only brought this up so he was aware of the slight risk. He asked if I was done and then said, why didn't you tell me this four years ago when I found out about your affair? Or better yet, why didn't you tell me this 13 years ago right after you had the affair? Or even better yet, why didn't you just not cheat with your old boyfriend and be a decent wife to me and a good mother to your children? This broke me, and I cried, saying that I would change things if I could, but I couldn't. I could only control my actions from now on. He then explained what was going to happen next. He explained that the entire family would take ancestry tests, and if our son's test came back negative, he would be the one to tell him. Then he would divorce me, and I would give him full custody of our son. I agreed to this, but told him I was confident that he was our son's father. I also asked if we could still share our bed and continue our relationship where we left off. 
He refused and said I would need to sleep on the pull-out couch in our bedroom for now. I was disappointed but accepted it, as at least he was still willing to share the same room with me. We all took the ancestry tests, and thankfully, the results showed that my husband was indeed our son's father. After getting the results, my husband helped our son complete his class project. He told me he was relieved, and I thought things would return to the way they had been, but they haven't. I'm still sleeping on the couch, and my husband has become distant. He only spends time with me when our son is present or when our daughters are home. He has also joined a local hiking club as the vice president, so most evenings after dinner, if he's not with our son, he's out hiking with the club or working with the board. This has been going on for nearly four months, and I'm feeling lonely and left out. I want my husband back, the one I used to have before he found out about my affair. Does anyone have any suggestions for what I could do in addition to what I'm already doing? As I mentioned earlier in this post, I've done everything I can think of for him, but I haven't been able to break through his emotional barriers. I know he'll never forget what I've done and may never forgive me, but I'm willing to accept that as long as we can get back to the love and mutual admiration we once had for each other. My feelings for him are stronger than ever, but I fear he has fallen out of love with me. Thank you for reading this and understanding my situation. I'm back to quickly answer some common questions. First question answer, my old boyfriend and I dated during most of high school. I ended the relationship shortly after starting college because the long distance thing wasn't working for us. Second question answer, I reconnected with him when I returned home, and that's how we got in touch. Each of us on the reunion committee had a list of names to call and confirm attendance, and I purposely chose the list with his name on it. You could say I initiated contact. At the time, I wanted what happened to happen, and after it did, I felt terrible guilt, which has made me a better person. Third question answer, my husband has never pressured me into anything. I've willingly done everything with him, and most of the time, I've taken the initiative. While I do wish he'd hold me and show me affection as he did before, I've accepted our new life and appreciate any attention he gives me when he's happy. I'm happy. Fourth question, my husband has never cheated on me. I'm certain of this because his focus has always been 100% on his family. He's a good man, an excellent father, and the best husband. Although our relationship has changed, I'm sure most women here would envy what I have and gladly trade places with me. Seven months after. Sadly, my husband has decided that he wants a divorce. As I type this out, it fills me with sadness, sorrow, and regret. These have been my overwhelming feelings since he told me about his decision a month and a half ago. I did everything I could to try to change his mind, but he had already made up his decision. He explained that the past five years have been miserable for him, and he assumed they must have been tough for me as well. I told him I wasn't miserable and that simply being around him brought me joy. I begged him to reconsider, but it was clear that he had made up his mind. He expressed his desire to start a new life for himself, hoping I would do the same. He thanked me for the years before my unfaithfulness and for the effort I put into trying to salvage our marriage. Nevertheless, he said the affair, along with my dishonesty and lack of transparency, had damaged his ability to trust me completely. Beyond the affair, he acknowledged that I had been a great mother and he wanted us to remain close and be good parents after the divorce for the sake of our kids. We're working out the details outside of the courtroom, so the legal proceedings will be more of a formality. We have such a good relationship that his lawyer even questioned once whether we were sure about getting a divorce. I express my reluctance, but I respect my husband's decision. Everything should be finalized within the next year. One of the most challenging tasks will be selling the family home we built together, the place where we conceived and raised our children. While we'll both make a substantial amount from the sale, property prices in the area have increased so much that I wouldn't be able to afford a new one on my own. I'm currently searching for an apartment for my new place. My husband has similar plans but intends to buy a new place, possibly closer to his workplace. Our kids are handling it well, and my son has been incredibly supportive. He's truly a guardian angel, and having him around has helped me through some really tough times. My daughters have been supportive too, but they're both busy with school and don't visit home that often. I'm planning to start job hunting later this year, but for now, I'm taking a couple of months off to focus on self-improvement. Over the past five years, the stress in my life has taken a toll on me, leading to some weight gain. 
my doctor has warned me about high blood pressure and my weight. I don't turn to alcohol, so I use food as a way to cope when I'm under stress. Unlike my husband, I don't exercise or eat healthily, which has caused me to gain quite a bit of weight, especially recently. My goal is to return to the weight I was when we first got married. In conclusion, I want to express my gratitude to everyone for the thoughtful responses and their concern for my well-being. I never thought my life was that interesting, but apparently, it is. Please don't feel sorry for me. I'll be fine. The darkest days are behind me, and I'm moving towards a brighter future. Who knows, my husband might change his mind or return to me in the future. Stay grateful. We had two stories today, which of these two did you like better? I liked the first story best, it revealed more of the plot and was much more interesting than the second. And what is your opinion, write in the comments. See you in the next videos.